After the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, the role of large, terrestrial predator was largely filled by mammals. However, one of the largest predators during the age of mammals was actually a reptile. Named Baranosuchus, it was a distant relative of crocodilians, though it was far from semi-aquatic. It instead belonged to Sebecidae, a clade of terrestrial crocodilian morphs who split from the lineage that led to true crocodilians before they moved to the water. Most other Sebecids were also large predators, though not as massive as Baranosuchus. Baranosuchus was first named in 2007 based on the discovery of a partial skull in Venezuela. While other specimens have since been found in different regions in South America, such as Argentina and Peru, it is still only known from incomplete skulls. Comparisons with other Sebecids indicate the full skull length was about a meter long, as large as the skull of the theropod dinosaur, Daspletosaurus. Baranosuchus' snout was long, though not to the extent of most crocodilians. Unlike their thin, flat skulls, the skull of Baranosuchus was deep and narrow. Its deep skull allowed for more attachment points for its jaw muscles, resulting in an even more powerful bite. Its teeth were also very different from crocodilians. The straight and conical teeth of modern crocodilians are well suited for holding onto prey. Baranosuchus' teeth were instead serrated, blade-like, and curved backwards, which made them better suited for slicing through flesh. These teeth are similar to those of many extinct terrestrial crocodiliomorphs, Komodo dragons, as well as the theropod dinosaurs Baranosuchus had replaced. While postcranial Baranosuchus fossils still haven't been found, other Sebecids were quadrupeds with long legs held directly underneath their bodies. While ill-suited for the water compared to the shorter, sprawling legs of crocodilians, these legs were very well adapted for running. Given the size of its meter-long skull compared to its relatives, Baranosuchus is estimated to have been 6 meters long or more, with a weight of 1,600 to 1,740 kilograms. Not only was Baranosuchus larger than any known Sebecid, which otherwise didn't exceed a length of 4 meters long, but its size was exceptional for a Cenozoic predator. For comparison, this was close to the average weight of an adult Allosaurus while the largest modern land predator, the polar bear, only weighs a maximum of 800 kilograms. Very few of the terrestrial reptiles related to crocodilians reach such a size. One of the few exceptions was Rayzan androgobe, another terrestrial crocodilian morph. It was much older, living alongside the non-avian dinosaurs during the Middle Jurassic period. While known from even less remains than Baranosuchus, it seems to have been as large or even larger, large enough to hunt sauropod dinosaurs. Other examples are the more distant relations outside of Crocodiliomorpha during the Triassic period. But even though these distant crocodilian relatives filled most of the apex predator niches during this time, only a few, such as Prestosuchus, Saurosuchus, and Phacelosuchus, matched or exceeded Barinosuchus's estimated size. No other terrestrial Cenozoic land predator even came close to Barinosuchus. Even if it turns out to have only weighed half of the estimate, it would still be larger than any living terrestrial predator and remain a contender for the title of largest Cenozoic land predator. Still, being the largest terrestrial predator is not the same as being the largest predator. Larger predators live in the oceans today, and the contemporary, semi-aquatic crocodilian Purusaurus weighed at least three times as much as Barinosuchus. While the other Sebecids were not as massive as Baranosuchus, they were still among the largest predators in South America for most of the Age of Mammals, often serving as top predators. They were also the most primitive branch of Crocodiliomorpha known to survive past the Cretaceous period. This left the Sebecids as some of the largest predators in South America. Eventually, the gap left by the large, herbivorous dinosaurs was filled by mammals, followed by the Sebecids evolving larger size to keep up with Baranosuchus being by far the most extreme example. Though while the other Sebecids were not as large, Baranosuchus was far from a geologically brief exception to the normal state of affairs in Cenozoic South America. Baranosuchus lived for roughly 25 million years, from the Middle Eocene, at least 37 million years ago, to the Mid-Miocene, about 12 million years ago. To put this into perspective, the apparent lifespan of Baranosuchus was about two-fifths of the entire Cenozoic era, and was longer than the time from now 
to the last common ancestor of humans and orangutans. In all likelihood, since Baranosuchus is only known from limited remains, it more likely represents a group of closely related species or even genre through time instead of a single, extremely long-lived species. Without even a complete skull, there is simply not enough material to differentiate between them right now. South America was largely isolated from the rest of the world during most of the Cenozoic era, leading to a very unique fauna. Besides the Sebecids, the other large terrestrial predators in South America were the terror birds and the mammalian sparse acidons. The Sebecid langstina also lived at the same time as Baranosuchus, though it is unclear if it lived in the same parts of South America. Either way, the massive Baranosuchus was certainly the top predator of its time. Given its low, crocodile-like metabolism, Baranosuchus would not have had the energy to pursue its prey far. Therefore, like modern Komodo dragons, Baranosuchus would have likely laid in ambush near frequently traveled paths, waiting for prey to come close before charging. While it may not have had the endurance of most endotherms, if its legs were like those of other sebecids, its short bursts of speed would have been even faster than those crocodilians and Komodo dragons are capable of. With its powerful jaws and flesh-cutting teeth, Baranosuchus would have torn prey apart with ease. Of course, this only applies to adults. Like Komodo dragons, younger Baranosuchus likely filled different ecological roles as they grew. Still, an adult Baranosuchus was perhaps the most dangerous terrestrial predator since Tyrannosaurus rex. But like Tyrannosaurus, there were forces far outside of its control. While the extinction of Tyrannosaurus rex was due to a geologically brief catastrophe, Baranosuchus seems to have died out due to more gradual events, being one of the casualties of local climate change caused by the increasing elevation of the Andes Mountains. As a large predator, Baranosuchus was particularly vulnerable to disruptions in its environment. A contributing factor was likely a decline in global temperatures, which left large ectotherms like Baranosuchus at a greater disadvantage to endotherms, even in the tropics. Baranosuchus and the fellow Sebecid Langstina finally went extinct during the middle of the Miocene, 12 million years ago, ending the Sebecid lineage forever. Though now extinct, Baranosuchus had an impressive reign. It was not only a reptilian apex predator in a world dominated by mammals, but the largest land predator during the entire age of mammals. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to Alexander Class, who suggested the topic of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.